a 50% increase in businesses collapsing. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Let's have a look at this article from news.com.au about an increase. Well, company collapses up 50% since April. Now, well, the chickens could be coming home to roost for many businesses. Now, I just want to bring this to your attention. This was, well, part of the government coming to the rescue that scared me the most. It was the keeping zombie companies alive. And you can see the companies entering, well, external administration, it trended down. So, you know, the fact that you could trade while insolvent because that's how they kept the zombies alive, it dragged down the trend. You know, it's pretty flat, but then boom, it plummeted. So we're seeing more and more businesses go to the wall and, well, collapse, sadly. We've spoken about many of them in the construction sector and we've got the... uh, uh, we've got the sad numbers to show for it. But you've got to remember, guys, it takes time for these problems to manifest. This scared me the most because, well, I'm a small business person. I don't want to deal with businesses that are insolvent. For me, I lose time and the you know the power, software, licensing costs, all of that. For a tradie building and installing things, they lose materials. That's even worse. So let's look at this. It's no secret there's been a massive rise in Australian companies collapsing, but new findings show they have skyrocketed by a whopping 50% since April. Now, we have to remember, if they've gone down really low, 50% may sound dramatic, but we may just be returning to normal. The construction industry has faced a particular crisis with dozens of firms going under this year. But everything from billion-dollar tech startups to a grocery delivery companies have become casualties of this disturbing trend. Well... Overall, companies going into external administration are up 46% year-on-year, while court actions are up 54% year-on-year. So this means people aren't getting paid. They're not getting paid, and court action to wind them up is being taken. You can win that and still not get any money. So the huge jump has been blamed on interest rates, interest rate rises causing cheap money to dry up, while spooked investors are pulling back on spending cash on startups as valuations have taken a dramatic dive with a slew of staff cards battering the sector. Well, I'd also argue that, well, you've got people that aren't that are run, trading while insolvent. Remember that. Meanwhile, many businesses are already suffering depleted cash reserve as a result of the pandemic, and the ATO has ramped up its debt collection according to the agency. Now, the ATO is number two. I think there was one debt collection agency that was the number one organization that bankrupted businesses in Australia, and ATO is number two. So, ramping up legal action. Creditor Watch has issued a chilling warning that the rise in business insolvencies will continue this year as multiple impacts batter the economy, including ongoing supply chain issues, declining consumer confidence, rising interest rates, inflation, and labor shortages. Credit to Watch Chief Executive Patrick Coughlin said the hands-off approach to debt collection adopted by the ATO and many lenders during the pandemic is clearly over. Well, we'll have to see if the mortgage holidays ever come back. Did, you ever, did anyone ever think they'd see that in their lives? I, I never thought I'd see that. You know? So remember, if, if you're predicting massive declines in property, you know, there'll be calls for mortgage holidays again. The massive rise in external administrator, it's external administrations is clearly a disturbing trend, now up 50% since April. A data shows the court actions are back to pre-COVID levels. See, this is the thing. Court's back to normal, okay? It, it's not a disturbing trend if the right rates are going up again in these uh, businesses going under, if it's just going back to the mean. Like I've got another video about building approvals that I want to go through. And you can see here, you know, the building approvals have gone down. It's crashed so much. I need to get the fire and the bloody flames in the background, the scary music, if I could be bothered editing. But it's just, you know, going back to, well, here it is. It's going back to normal, guys. Private sector houses are going back to normal. Okay. That, that's bloody home builder right there. 
Now, the question is, the question is, if we've taken like a whole lot of projects here and moved them up there, so that means we're going to get joint like that cut out. Okay, that's <laughs> that's what we need to worry about in the housing sector. So, but anyway, back on this topic. Once again, I'm going off now. I've lost where I've, I've got the video. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. There we go. If it's just going back to normal, do we need to worry? It's what it's what we should have all expected. It's what I've expected. When I said we're facing a, or well, some time ago, we're facing an insolvency cliff. Time. Wait, Hank, there we go. Sorry, guys, I've got a few, few issues with the equipment here. It's a well-oiled machine, it Heiser says. With businesses and consumer confidence declining and inflation and interest rates on the rise, this doesn't bode well for businesses, particularly small and medium enterprises whose cash reserves were depleted during the pandemic and who are now operating on much tighter margins. No longer awash with cash. Aussie startups have been particularly hard hit. With the casualties piling up in the tech sector, we have startups. The latest was an Aussie tech company called Metigi which left staff shell-shocked by its sudden collapse last week after it planned to raise money with a valuation of $1 billion. <laughs> Let's look it up. I've never heard of this thing. Let's look them up. Here we go. I feel empowered with social media AI inside. Okay. Um, um, for marketing and growing business. Ooh, boy. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm not. I'm not the demo. You know. That's worth a billion dollars. <laughs> uh, but then again, you see some of the garbage in crypto that sells for so much. It's not a surprise. Businesses are trying to raise money for growth. Are particularly at risk in the current environment. Added creditor watch chief economist and at Ketomskin. When interest rates were low and the world was awash with cash, investors were hungry for investment opportunities and willing to move up the risk curve to find good returns. Now that cash is being consumed by ever-increasing prices and debt costs a lot more, the appetite for risk is dropping. Startup businesses, or those on the growth phase, are always seen riskier. We've already seen this phenomenon hit in the tech sector, and many well-known companies are being repriced to reflect this. Let's see what happens to Tesla, eh? Other recent failed startups include grocery delivery service Send, which went to liquidation at the end of May after the company spent $11 million in eight months to stay afloat. It was also a Victorian food delivery company that styled itself as a rival to Uber Eats and Deliveroo collapsed in July as it became unprofitable despite making more than $6 million worth of deliveries since it launched in 2017 and had 18,000 customers. I mean, the mu- Uber Eats they lose money on and the restaurants hate it. I did that for a, for a time, and I tell you, it, it felt terrible, like taking a bag of greasy crap to someone who's like morbidly obese and about to look like they're going to die. I felt like a drug dealer, and in some ways, I guess I was, wasn't I, with this sugary shit. Anyway, you should at least make people waddle to the bloody restaurant to get the food themselves. That's probably not politically correct, but just, just feel sorry for them. Meanwhile, Australia's first ever neo bank founded in 2017, Vault Bank went under last month, with 140 staff losing their jobs, while 6,000 customers were told to withdraw their funds. At least they got their money. Okay, so we've had a bank wound up here in Australia, everyone got their money. Even when Pyramid went under, people eventually got paid back. Although it was a tax that we all had to bear in Victoria, but don't worry guys, I'm sure everyone will vote for Dan again down there. A venture capital firm issued a sober message, sobering message about the state of Australia's startup. Uh, hang on. Warning that more new companies would go bust and was pulling back on funding as a result. Credit to Watch also identified five regions where businesses are more at risk of going under. The suburbs of Maryland, Canterbury and Auburn in New South Wales, a surface paradise and all new in Queensland, there's businesses in Surface Paradise. I thought it was just, you know, strip clubs and karaoke bars and nightclubs and dodgy real estate sales. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. 
Um, the construction collapse to continue. Well, yes, we're all f- uh, quite familiar with the construction apocalypse. After four consecutive months of increases in interest rates and inflations, um, it's clear the slowdown in demand in many industries is inevitable, added Ms. Thompson. Well, we are seeing a... Okay, we've, we've, we've talked through a lot of this. And as I've said, building approvals are returning to normal. They were artificially stimulated by government intervention, so they're returning to normal. Now we just have to hope, we have to hope that this doesn't happen. That, is, that, that we don't, these chunk of projects we see here, that's a lot of work, you know. The line should have gone like this, okay? It should have gone like that. Well, it's probably even a bit lower there. Look how it went. So we need to hope that chunk doesn't come out from here. Or else you, it's going to be tough times in residential. But don't worry, we've got 250,000 people a year coming into the country. A country with 25 million. And that's probably, what, a half or a third of what America, a country with 300 million, brings in? I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure our in infrastructure and potable water and, and transportation system can deal with it. it, it it's fine. Because they're building these things all the time, guys. All the time. To- oh, well, they're not? Oh, Oh, well, don't worry. We've got to keep those houses going up. Anyway, guys, let's uh, have a bit of a talk. I can't say I'm at all surprised we're seeing an increase in the number of businesses collapsing, but I suspect it's more a return to normal than uh, you know, cat- catastrophic collapse, fire, brimstone, you know, screeching sound effects in the background for YouTube. I think we're just going back to normal, everyone. Now, the problem is, are we going to stay at normal or is it going to get a bit worse? And how bad is it going to get? I would not be surprised if we see a recession in the residential construction sector, but then you'll see there'll be property councils and HIA and other organizations will be saying, we've got labor shortages, bring more people in here, and then that'll increase demand. It's already happening. And you've got international students wanting to flood back to Australia as well. So, yeah, it may be just... Back to good old normal. Guys, it may be back to normal and s- sensible uh, work in the construction sector, at least in housing, but I don't think prices are going to go down that much, if at all. Everything's probably still going to remain expensive. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments below. Now, before I do my outro spiel, I would like to draw your attention to two other YouTube channels that I have created, guys. And bear with me, I'm not very organized tonight. I've got Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International. Heiser Bim is where I do, well, tutorials on a variety of different things, particularly related to my work as a professional architect and the software and tools that I use. So, well, I can teach other people and I can refer to them when I've forgotten things and years later. You know, I'll, watch my, I'll look up a tutorial on how to do something and I'll, I'll see, oh, shit, wait, I did a tutorial on that because it appears. A lot of it at the moment is going to be interesting little um, useful tools and uh, a lot of point cloud stuff if that is something you're interested in. And also I've got Heiser Says International where I discuss more an international flavor of news similar to what I do here on Heiser Says. So check those channels out. I'm plugging them because people... Well, we're unaware of them. As always, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Financially via YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links, buying our pocket squares, or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Still good coffee. Nice and cheap.